I haven't done a tutorial in a while, so I thought, hey, I'll make one to answer a question I've had a few people asking quite often recently. Um, and so this one shouldn't be too long. It's going to be uh, how to loop a particle effect in a GIF. Um, like I have here, you can see that there's there's no transition that you can see where suddenly the particles jump. Being the particles are completely random, you can't really animate them, uh, can't loop them. So, uh, but in here you see that you really can't see the seam uh, where the the loop goes to restart. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of show you a trick that I learned on how to make these loop. And it may not work all the time, but anything that's kind of random and moving in the background like this, um, it should work with. Um, the way I do it is going to be in Photoshop. There's going to be other ways you can probably do it as well, but this is the way that I kind of know how. Um, you can do it in an After Effects as well, but um, I'm going to show you how to do it in here. And I'm using Photoshop um, uh, Creative Cloud version. So uh, I'm just going to open up a, a different GIF here, one I just did recently with a uh, little pip here. Um, and I'm not going to show how to make a GIF, just kind of how to, how to do this portion of it. So if you don't know how to make a GIF, you may need to look somewhere else here. Um, so I'm just going to open up, and this is 30 frames per second, uh, this animation. And if you don't have the timeline open uh, under window, it'll be either timeline depending on version or animation. And this will get to you your window here. Um, now, this is a five second animation, but you'll notice I actually have 15 seconds here. Uh, whenever I export just about any animation, I make sure that I have about three times what I'll technically need. Um, that's to play a little bit safe, but I'll, and also it can cause some of the issues with eye closing, so you want to have a little bit of buffer room. But I'll show you the other reason that I do this. So if you look, uh, I'm just going to grab the middle here because it's save a spot. So I'm going to move these bars in so that we're selecting only five second range. So now you see if I let this buffer here, uh, buffer the animation, that. The, the models themselves will be uh, a good loop, and I'll, I'll put it in here. Um, you'll notice that the, the models loop smoothly, but as soon as it hits the end here, you'll notice that the background changes. Well, that cloud effect that I have is particles. Um, so they're moving, but as soon as this loop goes to restart, if I keep going past this point, you'll notice it's smooth. Well, that's because I'm going into an area that uh, I'm not, if it's not looped, it's not restarting. So as soon as this actually does restart, you notice the clouds will skip ahead. That's not going to be effect you want. You can see that seam, and it actually makes it feel like the model themselves are skipping. So you can cheat and fix this a little bit. Um, this is the reason that I have a little bit of this buffer room. If you look here, if I start here, and even though this isn't an area that's currently in the animation, it does smoothly go into the next one. So this is the key right here: is making trying to get this transition. To work instead of going from the end of this to here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to split this video or split this this uh this image sequence right here um uh, so that it's two pieces and i'm going to gr drag one down so now they are on two separate timelines now i'm going to move this one over, well i'll keep it within the range here so i'll move this this is the front piece, this is the front third, and this is the second two thirds. So this is the first, piece, uh, first third, second third, and the last third. Now, this is that point of transition that was smooth. So from, from this point, transitioning to this point is smooth. There is, should be fine. So we're going to use a little bit of, uh, of a transparency effect, a little bit of transition. So I'm going to keyframe, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to do about two seconds here. I'm going to go into this video group and I'm going to keyframe opacity here, keyframe opacity at the very end, right there. Yeah, just a little bit before. I don't want to catch it on the last frame. So, what this is doing is, well, first let's go back to this other one. I'm going to set this one to zero. So, what this is saying is that this top layer is invisible. Well, let's go. There we go. So oh, I'm breaking things. Okay, so this top layer is invisible up until this point. At this point, it slowly changes and drifts the opacity until this point where it's 100%. You can see here it's about half. Here it's about 25%. 
So this is saying it uh, in if you could probably use the keyframing if you're doing the animating. Um, so right now I'm seeing this below one. At this point, oops, at uh, this point it starts sh um, transitioning so that I only see this top layer at this point. Well, at this point now, when this transitions back to this lower one, it's going to be perfectly smooth because that is that point where it was a smooth transition from one layer to the next. So now, if I buffer this, you, uh, we should see that this this endpoint here now has a nice smooth transition that you can't notice. So if you look here, as soon as it passes the point, you can't even notice it. It was perfectly smooth. Um, the only point of worry that you might have is right here. If you make a GIF that's too short, say like one or two seconds with a uh, particle effect, this ha having that little buffer is going to be very difficult because you're either going to have to fade the whole thing, which could destroy some of the particle effects, or you're, it's going to be very noticeable what you're doing. So there's still going to be situations where you're not going to be able to use it, but this works for um, like fog effects, um, like it like here uh, with the spinning ones there is a transition here where they're fading but you really can't tell when it is um, it also works for uh, volumetric lights that have noise because uh, they'll actually shift and move randomly um, and there's actually a, just a whole bunch of other stuff that doing this can actually come in handy with and I try to do it for most stuff and don't worry about you losing like focus on the edges of the model because the animation should be, and as long as all three, all pieces are exactly the same by way of animating, it doesn't matter what the background is doing. It, the models and stuff will they'll still maintain a, and themselves in pretty sharp focus. So uh, that's kind of how I go about it. If you, uh, if you have another program, I'm not sure how that's going to work. This is just my way on here, but methods should be a, pretty similar. Um, that's that's really all I wanted to show on this one. So if uh, if you were trying to make your own GIF with some particle effects, uh, try this out. See if uh, see if it works for you for giving uh, the nice smooth um, nice smooth loop for you.